I would if I had any takers. I got something a bit unique to show today. It's a, a little something that I bought myself uh, over Christmas for Christmas. This is one of those generic computer oriented surge protectors. Um, if you've never seen one of these things, this is functionally a surge protector, but of a special design and a special feature set meant specifically for use with computers. Um, these were popular, uh, I'd say starting in the mid or late 80s, and you didn't really see them after the late 90s, early 2000s. They just fell out of style. Um, but these are something that you come across, you know, once in a while. And functionally, it's just a surge protector. Um, except, as you can see here, it's in this pizza box style design. And that was so you could place your computer or computer monitor on top of it. So rather than something that would hang, you know, behind your desk or whatever and plug into the wall, um, this would be at the front and center of your computer setup. And the reason for that is because as you can see here, it's got six different switches for it. One is a master switch that controls power to everything. And then these five switches individually switch the outlets. There's five outlets on the back of this thing to plug in five different components. And you have a switch to turn every outlet on and off. And as you can see, they're actually labeled here for the suggested things you can plug into them. We have computer, monitor, printer, auxiliary one, and auxiliary two. I've wanted one of these literally most of my life. I've only seen one in the wild once that I can think of. The year was 1999. Literally, I'm not kidding here. Um, it was when I started kindergarten uh, at the elementary school. I went to a small, rural elementary school. We didn't have a lot of money. We weren't on the utmost of technology. So at the time I started school in 1999, and up until, you know, 2002 or 2003, the majority of our computers were from the mid-1990s, um, which wasn't bad. It was actually pretty par for the course, but it obviously wasn't the latest and greatest. Um, most, or if not all, of our computers we had at the school, and we had a couple dozen of them across two computer labs, they were mostly from the mid-90s. Um, I have no idea what they were, but if I had to guess, they were probably mostly 486, 5x86, and Pentium class systems. And uh, all different brands. There was no one dominant brand. It was just a smorgasbord of brands. And a couple of them were even white box systems, you know, custom built systems that you'd get from a mom and pop shop. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, one computer in one of the labs was in a case very similar to the Turbo 486 desktop that I have. And that's one of the reasons that I was so excited when I first got the uh, Turbo 486 desktop back in high school because that computer in my elementary school, it was very similar. It had the green LED display that showed you know, presumably the processor clock speed, and I thought that was so cool. It was one of my favorite computers um, in the school, and so I'm really glad to be able to own a very similar example today. But another one of my favorite computers in my elementary school was one computer. It was only the one that uh, had one of these. It was attached to one of these, and uh, uh, it, the computer sat on top of this, and then the monitor on top of the computer and I thought it was super cool at the time it was just you know the computers we had had to have been donated or bought en masse from like a used computer store because it was just everything no one computer was the same we had the one white box system with the LED display the one computer that was plugged into one of these and just tons of different brands and types and everything the majority of them ran Windows 95 or 98. It was a pretty equal split between 95 and 98. And then a good few ran Windows 3.1. And all the ones that ran Windows 3.1 were in the secondary computer lab, which was slightly smaller. It housed 8 or 10 computers. 
And actually, we had three computers in the kindergarten classroom, presumably the oldest ones in the school. They all ran Windows 3.1. So when I started school in 1999, um, I had never used a modern computer until then, and it was one of those Windows 3.1 machines. So that is how Windows 3.1 came to be the um, first version of Windows I ever used, um, which is not a common thing for people my age. The majority of people my age started off with Windows 98, a good few of them with Windows 95, but very few with Windows 3.1. I'm, I'm in a very tiny minority of uh, people my age specifically. Um, bit of a tangent there, but I thought it was cool nonetheless to share. So we had the one computer that sat on top of one of these, and it was my favorite computer to use in all the school. It was a Windows 95 or 98 machine, and the reason it was my favorite computer was because of this. And what's so cool about this is that every switch lights up. Ah, oh, that just looks looks like a spaceship. Every switch has a neon indicator lamp in it. And as you can see, the master switch here, which controls power to everything, is red. And the rest of the switches are orange. And this was just the coolest thing ever um, to me, because I'd never seen anything like this before. And, you know, it, it looks so cool. And it felt re really cool just to sit at it because it looks like, you know, you had so much power, the power to control everything. And there were no, like, printers or anything. It was just a computer and a monitor. So it's quite possible that other computers were plugged into the other ports on this. So I never dared touch the switches lest I possibly switch someone else's computer off. So all the switches always stayed on. And it just looks so cool. And of course, all the neon indicator lamps are quite, well, not quite, but they're a little bit worn. You can see this one here. Turn my light off here. And turn my exposure down, if I remember how to do that on this camcorder. You can see they flicker quite a bit. The arc jumps between one cathode or the other, so they're a little bit worn. And that adds to the coolness, of course. And so, yeah, I just absolutely loved it, and I always wanted something like this since then. And uh, I finally, and I've actually could have had a practical use for one for many years, but it was finally this Christmas. I found this one on eBay. I forget what I paid for it. I think it was about $10 shipped. Um, although you don't come across these in the wild very much, or at least I never have, um, you can buy one quite easily on eBay. Um, it's a little hard to find them, but there are plenty of them on eBay, very cheap. You just gotta know the right terms to search. The weird thing about these is, is that for some reason, these particular devices, they're one of those things that were all made in China, and they were all sold under tons of different brand names, and some of them, like mine, no brand name at all. Um, if my long-term memory is correct, um, this, my unit here, is identical to the one um, that was in my elementary school. Absolutely identical, and that one, too, didn't have a brand name, if I remember right. So it probably was made in the same factory as this. Um, but yeah, you generally find these with either no brand name on them, or a slew of brand names you never heard of, or a couple of brand names that you do recognize, but you never hear them advertised or anything like that. Um, you find a lot of these with no brand name on them. Some of them you find with the Memorex brand name. And I think I've seen a couple on eBay with the Woods brand name. The American Woods company, not the Canadian Woods that made refrigerators and stuff. Um, so yeah, these are just one of those weird things made in China, sold under a bunch of different names. And they're technically quite cheap in construction, but they work just fine, and they do the job, and they're just really nice. There's nothing really wrong with these. Things to search for on eBay if you want to get one of these. Um, surge protector would be the first one, but unfortunately you'll have to weed through hundreds, if not thousands, of normal surge protector listings to find one of these. Basically, search surge protector, 
and then switch and then filter it to be used items only not new items you don't want to show new items because none of these or extremely few of these are going to be new they're all going to be used so that'll help you weed out some of the normal surge protectors and other than that it's just grinding through tons of pages of listings until you come across some of these um, other things to search for, the Memorex branded ones were called the Power Center. So if you search Memorex Power Center, um, you might find a few of the Memorex branded ones. If you search just um, Power Center Surge Protector or Computer Power Center or Vintage Surge Protector or Vintage Power Center um, or Woods Power Center, um, that'll help you find some of these more easily. But there, there's plenty on there on eBay. You just, you're just going to know what to search for. And, and they're quite cheap to get. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to um, have gotten this one. It's just really nice to have. I actually use this. It's set up over there on the desk with my desktop computer set up, which I know I still need to make a video to show. I do hope to do that in the near future here. So yeah, and this thing comes in handy. I've got something plugged into every outlet, and uh, it's awesome. I, I use the switches. I individually switch stuff fairly often. Um, like every every morning when I get up and get ready for work, I go on the computer while I eat breakfast. And you know, normally these two switches, my computer monitors are connected to. And so when I go to bed at night, I I just switch these off to turn the monitors off. I don't bother using the power buttons on the monitor and then when I get up in the morning I turn my monitors back on so it's very nice that way um, I have a lamp that's connected to the monitor button so I turn the lamp on and off with the monitor switch so it's it's, it's an extremely useful device and I'm quite happy to have it and it looks awesome especially with the rest of my computer setup which is made up mostly of vintage components if you can believe it um, so let's take a look at this here. So, functionally, it's your standard surge protector. It's got quite a nice power cord on it. It's a brand name power cord. It's 14 gauge, 15 amp rated, um, 75 degrees Celsius, and it feels quite sturdy and quite thick. It's a nice cord. The whole thing's good for 15 amps of current, prior for the course. There's our five outlets, and you can see they've been labeled conveniently. This is a 15 amp circuit breaker, so if anything, if any one thing or if the combination of things draws more than 15 amps of current, that'll pop, and you can just put it in, push it in to reset it. Now look at this. I don't think all of these have this, but this one does. Um, it's got surge protection for your phone or modem or whatever, so that's very, very nice. Now if we look on the bottom, it actually has some information on it. First of all, this is UL listed, so that's quite nice. And actually, here's another good search term on eBay, transient voltage surge suppressor. And in fact, that might actually be what I searched to ultimately come across this listing, because I knew that some listings were titled um, that way. Over here it says relocatable power taps transient voltage surge suppressors model PC0061. So that's another good term, that model number there. 125 volt, 15 amp, 60 hertz. Maximum suppression voltage, 330 volts. And here's the date code, take a look at this, 9703. I would assume that means a manufacture date of 1997, which would make this quite a recently made unit, one of the more one of the more recent ones made, and of course made in China. So let's take a look inside this. We can open this up. There's four screws here, and then this black part of this housing separates from the white portion of the casing. And uh, we'll see what's inside, and I'll give an explanation of what is inside and how everything works. Alright, once you take the screws out, and I missed one, there's a small screw on the back of the case right there. The uh, 
top part of the case slips off and this is what you're left with and as you can see there ain't a whole heck of a lot going on in here um yeah basically you know the whole reason it's as big as it is is just so it's big enough for a computer to sit on top of it but otherwise there's really nothing going on in here it's it's just wires going to switches going to outlets and then some basic very basic cheap surge protector stuff going on inside it now it might look a little bit confusing as to how everything's wired here so I actually drew a schematic and I'm no big Clive I'm definitely no big Clive but uh, I did my best here so take a look at the schematic here so basically um, it's actually not that complicated once you make sense of everything but basically here's your AC power phase and neutral and phase goes up through the circuit breaker through the master switch and then to each of the five switched outlets so when you turn the switch on it connects phase to the phase portion of each outlet these are the five outlets my crappy outlet drawings and yeah they're all just tied together at the phase side and they're all tied together at the neutral side now I drew them with curved wires like this because that's what it actually physically looks like it's the same up here but I didn't think to do it there so I regret that I should have stuck to one design but um, yeah so there actually here's the neutral just being jumped from outlet to outlet and then on the phase side it's actually jumped from switch to switch so like I've got here in addition to applying um, connecting phase to the phase side of each outlet when you turn the switch on it connects phase to one side of the neon lamp that's inside of each switch now I drew the neon lamp symbols here but there's actually a resistor in series with each neon lamp um, but I didn't bother drawing that so each neon lamp is always tied to neutral and when you turn the respective switch on it connects phase so the neon lamp lights up so there's a neon lamp for each switch and there's your circuit breaker which is that guy right here just in series with the phase side and the master switch this guy which is also in series with the phase side. You can see phase coming right from the power cord into the circuit breaker, into the switch, and then paralleled with each of the switches, just like I've drawn. Hey, you may be wondering, what are these three things that say VAR on them? Well, that is these three blue guys right here. One, two, three. These are devices, they look like a ceramic capacitor, they are not. These are devices called varistors. Varistors are the um, main ingredient in a surge protector. These little guys are what provides the actual surge protection. As in suppressing the high voltage spikes that come from, say, if lightning hits your house. A varistor is a special type of resistor whose resistance changes as the voltage increases, as the voltage on that varistor increases. So it has a nonlinear current voltage relationship. Actually, in most cases, it's an exponential current voltage relationship. Because usually, um, with most of the ones anyway, as far as I know, as voltage on a varistor increases, its resistance decreases. So as you apply more and more voltage, your current goes like this. It's exponential. So how do these work for sur surge protection? Well, imagine if you have a voltage surge. So these things normally are going to see, you know, 120 volts or whatever normal voltage happens to be across them. And if you have a voltage surge, they see a really high voltage. And so upon the voltage surge, their resistance suddenly decreases and you know what I just realized an error in my schematic all three of these are connected after the uh, circuit breaker and I drew that wrong I drew them as bypassing the circuit breaker so I'll, I'll continue here as if they weren't um, connected to the circuit breaker so what happens is if there's a voltage surge these are gonna see 
a sudden high um, voltage spike and so the resistance of them suddenly drops dramatically and so they start drawing a ton of current and because they draw a ton of current they are able to trip another protection device be it a fuse or a circuit breaker so there's three of them here one for each basically each scenario if you will of possible voltage surge um, you have one that's directly across phase and neutral you have one that goes from neutral to ground as you can see this green ground wire it's go it goes right to the case and it also goes to each uh, outlet the ground pin of each outlet and one of the varistors um, goes from phase to ground and the other one goes from neutral to ground here's this one neutral to ground and here's this one phase to ground and that's a really awful uh, solder job and it's just a rivet there um, but yeah that, that looks really gross looks like it was done by hand um, but it's still holding so I made an error in the schematic all three of these actually come after the circuit breaker so this one here instead of this leg going straight to phase it actually goes up here between the breaker and master so if there was a voltage spike such that this varistor saw a sudden high voltage it's going to draw a bunch of current which will trip hopefully trip the circuit breaker cutting power off from everything hopefully saving your equipment from the voltage spike this varistor actually goes from here to ground and so that's the same thing if there was a voltage surge that um trying to think of how that would work um oh you know what it's not really for three different scenarios but you know because there's only really a one general scenario for a voltage spike but they all work together um, to provide the likelihood of, of the voltage surge not making it to your equipment. So you have the one that's directly between phase and neutral that'll hopefully trip the circuit breaker. And this one here, which is actually over here, going from phase to ground, what that'll do is when that shorts out because it has a high voltage across it, that'll direct current to ground. Um, if it's a high enough current, it'll trip the circuit breaker, but also um, it should, I think, trip the actual circuit breaker in your home. The breaker to that circuit that the device is plugged into, that'll see that there's a current going to ground and that'll just automatically trip the breaker. At least I believe modern circuit breakers are like this now. Maybe not all of them, but definitely like the GFCI. Um, uh, outlets and breakers um, if they see any amount of current going through ground they just immediately shut off and this varistor going from uh, neutral to ground this is actually correct um, this is drawn correctly it's just straight from neutral to ground that's the same thing a voltage spike would hopefully see this thing short such that current travels from neutral to ground thus tripping some other um, uh, current protection device so that is that in a nutshell. It's actually not that hard to understand once you get the gist of it. And by the way, every cheap surge protector is in this manner. Um, if they were designed correctly, they all have the three varistors, one from phase to ground, one from neutral to ground, and one across phase and neutral. Um, and yeah, the vast majority of cheap surge protectors are designed in this way and it, it works really well. There is one downside to the use of varistors as opposed to a more complex and high-tech um, surge protection uh, scheme. And that's that varistors do have a limited lifespan in the number of surges they can um, survive. Um, each surge that a varistor sees cause it, causes it to be damaged slightly in such a way that it, its nominal resistance decreases slightly. So if you're in an area that sees a lot of surges, um, after a few years, these things might get worn out and damaged enough that in normal operation they cause things to trip. And then the fix would be to buy some varistors and solder them in there. 
There's a little yellow thing there. I don't know what it is. I would assume it's a capacitor. Um, you know what? I'm almost certain it's a capacitor, probably to suppress um, arcing caused by switching. So that's very nice to see in there. So for what would have been a cheap device, this thing has been designed quite nicely. Um, they covered all the bases that you would need in a basic surge protector. It's very nice. Now you can see the phone line protector here. That's totally separate from the rest of the circuit. The only commonality is it does have a ground wire going to it. I can't tell how it's wired, so I, I can't really say um, how exactly it works, but you can see there are two varistors there, so it definitely works in the same manner, using the varistors to quench um, the voltage spikes. Save your telephone or your modem or your North Star system. And you see it's even got a couple of fuses there, which is which is uh, quite neat. So yeah, that's pretty much inside the whole thing. I'll uh, put it back. Actually, no, I'm not going to put it back together just yet. There's something else I want to mention. Something cool about these is, um, before I bought this on eBay, um, when you look at these on eBay, you'll find a lot of them that the neon lamps inside the switches are burned out. They, they don't light up anymore. That's par for the course. These things are old. Some of them have seen quite extensive use. Sometimes you find the neon bulbs are just burned out and the switch don't light up. And um, I asked on the vintage computer forums before I bought this. I'm like, hey, um, how difficult would it be to replace the neon lamp inside the switch? Um, cause you know, if I got one where one or more of the neon lamps were burned out, I wouldn't want to leave it that way cause that wouldn't look cool at all. I'd want to replace it so that they all light up. Luckily I actually got one w in which all of them light up, which is nice. So I asked this on the Venus computer forums, how difficult would it be to replace, to disassemble the switch and replace the little neon bulbs? And the response I got was kind of interesting. The response was not how to replace the neon bulb. The response was that you can just replace the whole switch. And looking at this, indeed, these switches, as well as the outlets even, they're all just off-the-shelf parts. This thing is composed entirely of off-the-shelf parts. You can see the switches are just ordinary switches that just clip in there and I can actually push them out there. So if a neon lamp in one of these ever burned out, I could just buy a whole new switch, it's a standard type of switch, and just shove it in there and, and Bob's your uncle. I don't know how easy it would be to get switches with a white faceplate on them, but um, yeah, that's it's kind of cool. It's all standard componentry. I think these outlets, they look like standard componentry as well, because um, they've got stuff stamped on them. And the switches actually have stuff stamped on them. Uh, they've got ratings. No brand name or anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. So it's, it's very good to know. Just thought I'd share that they, uh, here. So I'm going to put this back together and then we'll wrap things up. Well, that is about all there is to show of my generic um, computer power surge protector that I bought on eBay last Christmas. And I'm very happy to have this. Um, they're still very useful. And, you know, if you have a desktop computer um, in a permanent setup with uh, a number of things plugged into the wall and you might have a use for one of these, um, absolutely get one. They're useful and they just look awesome. Um, and so I'm very happy to have this. Again, they're quite plentiful on eBay, although a little hard to find. And they're generally quite cheap, too. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just I... I'm really happy to have this, so I'm glad to be able to show it here for you today. I think this is the first video on YouTube detailing one of these things um, and what's inside and what different variants there are and stuff like that. And nobody has done, has covered anything like that on the internet at all. So it's another one of those firsts that I really like to do on this channel. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you later.